Good morning, everyone. Sorry, there's a bit of an echo. Uh, welcome to this press conference. Uh, Ongtad is presenting today its 2023 uh, Technology and Innovation Report. Uh, we have uh, two speakers at the podium. I have the pleasure to welcome the Deputy Secretary General uh, Pedro Manuel Moreno and uh, Shamika Sirimanek, who is the Director of the Division on Technology and Logistics. <coughs> They will um, both present, present you this report, which is under embargo, as well as this press conference, until Thursday the 16th at 12 GMT, 11, uh, 1 p.m. Sorry, uh, Geneva time. Without any further ado, because his agenda is very heavy and he will have to leave short, uh, shortly after his presentation, I will now give the floor to DSG uh, Pedro Moreno. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues uh, here in Geneva and elsewhere, uh, people joining us online as well. Welcome to this launch. Thank you for attending the launch of the uh, Technology and Innovation Report 2023, uh, which is titled Opening Green Windows, Technological Opportunities for a Low-Carbon World. Um, I congratulate uh, Ms. Shamika Siriman, the, uh, uh, the director of the division which uh, led the, uh, the production of this, uh, of this report, and she will later uh, comment further, give uh, more specifics on the report and answer your questions. Um, developing countries are facing a cascade of interconnected crises. We have been saying and repeating this over and over. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with the war in Ukraine, have triggered widespread global social economic crisis, and developing countries are bearing the brunt of these crises because of their structurally lower capabilities for diversifying their economies and for building the resilience mechanisms needed to recover and bounce back. Added to this is the climate crisis, and governments are facing complex trade-offs between competing policy priorities between promoting, on the one side, inclusive economic growth, and on the other side, protecting the planet. To address these challenges, the Technology and Innovation Report 2023 highlights the enormous opportunities that green innovation represent for developing countries to spur economic and technological development, allowing developing countries to leap out of the cascade of crisis and move forward. Let me actually highlight three key points of, the, uh, of this report. My first key message is that we are at the beginning of a green technological revolution and we must support developing countries to benefit from this revolution and we have to do it now. They must be able to catch this revolution early to tackle climate change to which most developing countries have contributed little. History has showed us that missing the early stages of technological revolutions create gaps that are very hard to close later, as we have seen, uh, particularly on, on climate change. At the beginning of a new technology wave, every country is more or less in the same position, but early adopters move ahead quicker and create advantages that makes that others struggle to catch up. From government policies to private sector initiatives, developing countries need strong responses to take advantage of these green windows of opportunity. My second key message is that today, this revolution is growing at an exponential rate and few developing countries have the capacities to take advantage of frontier technologies. Technologies uh, such as artificial intelligence, Internet, Internet of Things and green hydrogen already represent a 1.5 trillion US dollars market, which could grow to over 9.5 trillion US dollars by 2030. And while the demand is there, developing countries have been lagging behind in the market. Only a handful of countries supply frontier and green technologies, and almost all of them are developed economies. Developing countries are not benefiting at all. Once again, governments need to urgently boost technological, technical skills and scale up investments in ICT infrastructure, which is the backbone for data and connectivity required for these new technologies. Timely innovation, industrial and energy policies are especially crucial. Without that, the green revolution will not close but widen global inequalities. Thirdly, and finally, Developing countries, but especially least developed countries, cannot do this alone. 
international business as usual conditions mean that the many developing countries may not, on their own, be able to take advantage of green windows of opportunities. Therefore, immediate support from the international community is needed to gather enough resources and build the required know-how. Trade rules should permit developing countries to protect infant green industries through tariffs, subsidies, and public procurement, so they are able to meet local demand and reach the economies of scale that make exports more competitive. It is also critical that we improve the consistency of the trading system with the Paris Agreement so that green technology can be effectively transferred to developing nations. A tighter intellectual property regime makes it harder for new producers to break in. So flexibilities in the agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, known as TRIPS, should be given for environmentally sound technologies to make the trade regime more consistent with climate change agreements. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and gentlemen, I close by making a call as Deputy Secretary General of ANCTAD for greater support for developing countries so they can benefit from the green technology revolution that is happening, something, by the way, that has been a big call in the uh, recent LDC5 conference in Doha. They need more investment, more technology transfer, and more international coherence between global climate agreements and trade, global trade agreements. It will be the only way they can ensure sustainable development for their countries. And um, I think that I will, I will end here and, uh, and allow Shamika Siriman to provide more details on the key findings of, of the report and to answer all your, all your questions. With that, thank you very much. Congratulations for the, uh, for the work. And thank you. Thank you very much, TSG. I will let you leave the room. And uh, thank you very much. And um, Madame Sherimani, you can continue this presentation of uh, the Technology and Innovation Report. Thank you. Thank you Over very much. You. The premise of this report is that there is enormous potential for developing countries to benefit from green frontier technologies and mark the word potential. I'll get back to it a bit later. The market value of these technologies is projected to be 2.1 trillion US dollars in 2030 and up from 590 billion in 2020, and that's a jump of four times. But so far, developed countries are seizing most of the opportunities. Their total exports of green technologies increased from 60 billion US dollars in 2018 to over 156 billion in 2021. And this, in the same period, exports from developing countries started at a similar level with a $57 billion and it's gone up only to 75 billion and leaving these nations behind. And China is also included in the developing country numbers. So we ask, who is ready to capture the value? We present a frontier technology readiness index for 166 countries based on indicators of ICT infrastructure, skills, research and development, industrial capabilities, and finance. The top tier is dominated by high-income countries, as expected. The United States ranks first, followed by Sweden, Singapore, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. Emerging economies are mostly found in the second quarter of the list, with China ranking at 35, Brazil at 40, and India at 46. The first from Africa is South Africa, ranked at 56. So it is important to note that some developing countries have made deliberate policy changes and made critical in investments and have managed to vastly outperform in the rankings compared to their per capita income. India is a case in point. India remains the greatest overperformer, ranking 67 positions better than expected, followed by the Philippines 54 and Vietnam 44 places. India performs well on R&D and ICT capabilities, 
and it also reflects India's abundant supplies of qualified and highly skilled human resources available at a comparatively low cost. So unfortunately, countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, Sub-Saharan Africa, are the least ready to use, adopt, and adapt frontier technologies. And they are at great risk of missing out on this technological re revolution. We say in our report that the windows of opportunities open at the beginning of a technological wave, be they in making inroads in renewable energy and making a stake in global value chains. And this is the key message of the report. So we say low-income developing countries need international community support to build these technological and innovation capabilities. While they add very little to climate change, they have tremendous opportunities to achieve economic diversification and sustainable development through green technologies. So we call upon the international community to work urgently towards making trade agreements consistent with the landmark Paris Agreement on Climate. The Paris Agreement enshrines the support for technology development, technology transfer, capacity building, and financial assistance, especially in Articles 9, 10, and 11. We need to extend the principle of common but differentiated responsibility and respective capabilities enshrined in the Climate Agreement to trade, investment, and intellectual property rights. To me, it seems that the memo from the environment ministries have not yet reached the trade ministry, so the time is of essence to correct this situation. So let me give you three areas of actions. One, previous WTO rules on subsidies used to provide some flexibility for greener production. They allowed research and development subsidies and also subsidies for regional development and environmental protection. But these rules unfortunately expired in 2000. They need to be extended. Second, we recommend that whenever less technologically advanced developing countries identify trade rules that prevent their greening efforts, a waiver should be explicitly provided by the WTO membership. Third, and most importantly, a less stringent intellectual property regime at the global level is needed urgently to support less technologically advanced countries to benefit from green technologies. We are calling for something similar to the COVID-19 relief agreed at the 12th WTO ministerial conference. Like with COVID-19 relief, because it was a global crisis and life-threatening, knowledge sharing of green technologies is also urgently needed, basically to prevent the extinction of our species. So specifically, a TRIPS waiver can greatly promote technology transfer related to climate change, but the political will of big countries those who own these technologies is needed for this to materialize. So in conclusion, as I said at the beginning, there is enormous potential for developing countries to benefit from green frontier technologies. Most of these technologies are already here. We need the political will of the international community, especially those who own green technologies, to support developing countries to build more inclusive and sustainable future, not just for them, but for all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, this presentation, very detailed. Um, we will now open the floor for questions. I can check in the room. There are no hand raised. I see uh, online Robin Miller from AFP. Over to you, Robin. Uh, thank you. Uh, you mentioned uh, India, the Philippines, and Vietnam as countries that are uh, overperforming. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about some of the things that they are doing in order to uh, to overperform? So some of the examples that they're setting that perhaps other countries might be able to follow. Thank you. 
Thanks, Robin. I, this is a very, very good question. Let me uh, say that when we say all perform, we look at the, their per capita income, and then they see their performance on the technology index. And all performing means they're doing much better than one would have predicted given their per capita income. So India remains the greatest overperformer for, for few reasons. They are extremely good on uh, research and development and also developing ICT capabilities. We are talking about affordable connectivity uh, and affordable, affordable and high level, uh, you know, good quality connectivity. And also, it's very important to note that the India's abundant supplies of qualified and highly skilled human resources, especially in the area of digital, you know, the, the, is an important factor. And also the fact that this, uh, the high skill digital, uh, uh, um, let me free phrase, the, the, the very highly skilled personnel are also available at a comparatively low cost. So that, those are the reasons that are going for India. When we come to the Philippines and Vietnam, there is a little different story. They have a high ranking for industrial performance. This reflects high levels of FDI coming into the two countries, especially in high tech manufacturing and particularly electronics. And we also see that a lot of multinational companies are attracted to these two countries because they have a very strong supply chain connections and also very solid uh, uh, basis in manufacturing parts and components. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see... Yes, Robin, you have a follow-up. Over to you. Can we... Yes. Can you unmute yourself from it? No. So, yes. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, are there um, any examples of uh, uh, developing countries uh, that have become early adopters in, in particular technologies? And uh, again, is that is that something that other uh, states could follow. Yes, we, we look at uh, you know different dimensions. We say, for example, when it comes to renewable energy, we look at the uh, the, the existing conditions, whether the, the conditions are existing already for the renewable certain kinds of renewable energy to flourish, um, and then we also look at what are the policy interventions that can take, you know, that can uh, uh, take care of countries where there is, where there is probably not comparative advantage right now. So we have looked at and, 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 and several different countries and we have seen, you know, countries like uh, Thailand, for example, in, in renewable energies, they did not have the, uh, the comparative advantage, the endowed uh, uh, comparative advantage, but the policies made a big difference, the financing, and the, and the very big investments that the government made uh, to, to, to get in a renewable energy sectors going. And, uh, and, and similarly in Brazil, we find that because they have been, a, you know, it's a long time a producer of sugarcane, they were able to get into certain areas of uh, renewable energy much faster than others and to succeed in that area and which they have. So there are a series of uh, examples that we look in the report because the main point of this report is to highlight uh, good practices and also to highlight w what countries should not do. So there are many examples of this sort in the report. Thank you, I see that we have late comments, so maybe we can wait for, give you an extra minute to to raise your question. I would like to remind you that the press kit is available in seven languages, all the six UN plus the Portuguese. So all are available in the newsroom under embargo until Thursday at 12 noon. The whole team is available to answer any question until Thursday noon. And um, I think we are gonna stop here as I don't see any additional question.
Thank you very much, uh, Madam Sirimane, and uh, thank you all for being with us this afternoon. We stay in touch for further for other reports. Thank you.